was my favorite. And just miles of cheese. <laughs> They make it so fast. Like, bam, 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 bam. All right, I love that. They engulfed in the sauce. That's good. Check Please Bay Area is made possible by the members of KQBD and by... It's the room that's less sort of private and more private. It's a thousand things, big and small. Sutter Health. The Bay Area Airport that's close and reliable iFlyOAK.com Hi, I'm Leslie Sabraco. Welcome to Check Please Bay Area, the show where regular Bay Area residents review and talk about their favorite restaurants. We have three guests and each one recommends one of their favorite spots and the other two go check them out to see what they think. But this week, back by popular demand, we've invited kids to the Check Please table. Celeste is a 13-year-old 4-H club leader with a soft spot for cute and cuddly cavies. You know, curly-haired guinea pigs who strut their stuff at county fairs and pet pageants. And 12-year-old Aditya spends his Saturdays at swim meets gliding across the pool in mere seconds while dreaming of post-meet chow downs at his favorite taqueria. But first, with an equally competitive spirit, 14-year-old Hana is a fearless fencer who lunges and parries with glee. She's happy to take on high school boys twice her size, beating them on more than one occasion. She's just as courageous when it comes to dining out, doubling down on garlicky fries and other savory bites at a sleek Greek San Francisco spot called Suvla. I'm hungry. Suvla is a pioneering sort of style of restaurant and what we call a kind of upscale counter service. And don't let the line scare you, it moves very, very quickly. I'm Charles Belilis, I'm the founder and CEO of Suvla. My background has been mostly in the fine dining space, so I used to work for Thomas Keller at the French Laundry and then moved to San Francisco 11 years ago to go work for Chef Michael Mina. So Suvla is kind of a reflection of my uh, relationship with my Greek heritage. We're not considered to be a traditional or authentic Greek restaurant, but we really wanted to kind of riff off of a combination of these classic Greek flavors, but really sort of exploring, you know, the beautiful product that's available to us in California. Olive oil is certainly fundamental to everything that we do at Suvla, from marinating the meats all the way to going on top of the frozen Greek yogurt for dessert. And so we're really, really proud to be bringing in all of our olive oil from Greece. So Suvla is very proud to offer the country's only all-Greek beverage list. And that goes all the way down to the sparkling water. The Suvla motto is make it nice and be nice. You know, stemming from my pursuit of, you know, making sure that everything that we put out is of the highest quality with all of the sort of attention to detail, but doing it in a way where we're treating each other and our guests with the utmost respect. So the Greek word for grandma is yaya. Uh, and I've gotten a number of people over the years that have come to me and said this is better than my yayas. So that, to me, is the ultimate compliment. Hannah, how did you discover Suvla? I actually found it because my mom was hanging out with her friends one night and they stumbled across it and they decided to try it out. And after she took me there after fencing and it just became a favorite. And they have four different locations across San Francisco. Yes. What is your go-to item when you walk in the door at Suvla? Fries, oh my God, my mom knows by now. She's like, what do you wait? Wait, I know what you want. And she'll just grab me fries. Tell me about them. Um, Make me hungry. <laughs> I think it's the fact that they're so crispy, but they're not wafer thin. Yeah. They still have a thickness to them that I really enjoy. Plus, you must get the little side of, um, it's called granch sauce. Okay. Um, because it's paired perfectly with the crunch of the fries and the added um, oregano and cheese on top of the fries. Mm -hmm. Did you have that, Aditi? I didn't. You I didn't? didn't okay, fries. what did you get? Um, well, for my side, we got the juicy potatoes, which they take oh. the rotisserie drippings and they mix that with some olive oil and other stuff, and then they cut up these potatoes and serve it in a nice, beautiful, I guess you could call it, uh, bowl. And what was the next thing you had? Um, for my main course, I got the grilled chicken uh, mm -hmm. sandwich. Okay. I felt that the chicken was super juicy and flavorful. Yeah. And also, the compliment that the oranges, the navel oranges that they put in there, also like exploded and just... It made it so nice and juicy. And then they also put in um, some pickled red onions. I also had the the chicken sandwich as well. The, the chicken was good. It was tender and juicy. 
I wasn't a big fan of the oranges in it because mm. I was expecting more of a like a savory kind of because it's a sandwich, you know. Mm -hmm. But I did like the pickled red onions in there. But you liked the tangerines with the oranges. In I it, right? enjoyed them a lot. Yes. Um, but I also felt so. My sister had got the um, the pork sandwich. Mm -hmm. I felt that the pork was not as juicy and flavorful as the chicken. It was a little more on the dry side. Yeah. Right. <laughs> Sometimes it can be a little bit fatty or dry. So I strayed uh -huh. more towards the chicken for that fact. Got it. Um, I think the chicken is incredible, especially since you can actually watch it right. turned over the. Well, again, fire. that's what souvla means, right? Yes. You got these big grilled meats, you know, and yeah. Yeah. grilled skewers and and for someone who doesn't like meat as much they also have great like vegetable options Vegetarian. yeah mm -hmm. which is actually it's one of the favorites of the workers there mm -hmm. and you can tell that they're really into their food because if you ask for a recommendation they're always like they have something there they're quick they're snappy and they know what people will like yes yeah, so my mom got the vegetarian sandwich and she enjoyed that just so much she loved it um, it was very flavorful, it was juicy, it was just the right amount of like sweet and savory and mm -hmm. lots of vegetables. Chock full of vegetables. vegetables. And the salad is incredible. So Greek salads is, is a classic. It's a little bit more like a Caesar salad mm -hmm. versus like the chopped tomatoes and cucumbers that you would normally see in a Greek salad. But I think it's really paired well with this sort of rich creamy sauce that's a little bit tangy and sort of zesty. And there was tender roasted chicken on top of it. Um, but I think that with the pickled radishes on top, it's just a great bite to eat and it makes you feel like you're eating healthy when it's still delicious. What about that avgo lemon o soup? Oh, mm. God, comfort. <laughs> so good. So we serve uh, avgo lemon o soup, which literally translates to egg lemon. And it is one of the staples, if you will, kind of in the way that matzo ball soup is to people of the Jewish faith. We roast a tremendous amount of chicken every day, so we make chicken stock with all of the bones, and then we pick some of the chicken meat that goes into the sandwich and the salad, and then it's thickened with egg, and then also we add lemon juice, and there's a little bit of rice inside. So it's this very, very warm, thick, comforting uh, soup that just, it feels, it feels like a big hug in a bowl. Um, so I, for dessert, I had the cherry soft serve Greek yogurt. Yeah. Um, it was very tart and the cherry soda was much like the uh, cherry ice cream. And I love cherry personally, so I was very satisfied after mm. the juicy, flavorful, tender chicken sandwich. Mm -hmm. I also did get the frozen Greek yogurt oh, with baklava. So good! <laughs> and yes, it was my favorite because um, it was the baklava was nice and crispy right. and it was sweet and they had like nuts and honey on it. And it was a little difficult to eat because the yogurt is cold and it kind of like hardens it a little bit. Right. But I think the sweetness of it really did pair well with the, mm -hmm. I would say, a little more bland, tangy um, Greek yogurt. Yeah, I think sometimes... Um, it's a lot of yogurt in that like little small container. You'd think like, oh, I can finish that by myself. And you're halfway through and you're like, oh my God, I can't finish it. <laughs> um, so I think it's a lot, but I just love the baklava and it's, it's really well paired, I would yeah. say. And even though it's fast and casual, you know, you can sit and relax. What did you think of the atmosphere? No, it was nicely designed. Um, I feel it was lacking a more of a fun ambiance because I like going to restaurants and um, seeing like the decorations mm. and stuff, but it was mm -hmm. cool, like and casual. Right. So we sat in the back, and I mm -hmm. felt it was very like cozy and warm, almost. It kind of gave me like a guess you could say like a backyard vibe. Yeah, mm -hmm. it's very like a sleek, chic spot in mm -hmm. the city. It's great mm -hmm. for families, I think. A lot of times, like my parents and I, if we need to get takeout, Subla is the place to go, just because. Yeah. It's in and out, it's fast, it's snappy, and it's great. Okay, this is your restaurant, Hana. Wrap it up for us. I think it's quick, easy, and has great fries. All right. Um, if you're looking for something flavorful, I would definitely go to Souvla, and don't forget the tip. And Celeste? The Greek yogurt with baklava toppings is sure to satisfy your sweet tooth. If you would like to try Souvla, it's on Divisadero Street in San Francisco. It's open every day for lunch and dinner, and the average tab per person is around $20. From swimming to 4-H cook-offs, Celeste is no stranger to competition. She's won top prizes with her family recipes for choco flan and chili at the county fair.
That winning streak continued at her favorite restaurant, a family-friendly pizzeria that challenges customers to create original art for their walls. Yep, she won that contest too. It's all part of the fun at Pleasant Hills, Zachary's Pizza. Zachary's was founded by Zachary Zakowski and Barbara Gable, and they were originally from Chicago and then moved out to the Bay Area with the dream of starting the Chicago-style pizza restaurant. I think Zachary's guiding light is actually do the right thing in the right way for the right reason. So every time you're making a pizza, just take that time and care and make it the best that you can be day in and day out. Beautiful. Chicago style pizza is about two inches deep. We put a layer of meats and cheese. There's a very thin layer of dough that goes on top. Usually it melts during the cooking process and then we top that with our really chunky zesty tomato sauce. Our pizza does take 30 to 40 minutes to make depending on how busy we are. So it is a little bit of a process, but perfection takes time. So when it comes out, you have this really great, fresh, piping hot pizza that is just what comfort food dreams are made of. So we haven't ever branched out into the dessert realm. We do offer lollipops with every check, and honestly, I think those are even more popular with the kids than having a full dessert menu because parents are more likely to say no to dessert, but when you bring out the lollies, they can kind of snatch them off the check before they can say no, so. Now, Celeste, you won the competition. Tell me about that art competition, and is your artwork still hanging on the walls? Last time I went there, I believe it was still hanging up. And my art piece was a slice a day keeps the set away. And I, I painted little pizza slices and there's little polka dots all over it. <laughs> That's great. I saw that there. I think you I did. saw that I still too. Oh, yeah. See, you're famous. You're a star. <laughs> all because of Zachary's Pizza. Now, is this some place your family goes to eat? So we live in Vallejo, so it is kind of far. But every once in a while, like, oh, it's someone's birthday or let's say I get good marks on my report card, then we'll, we'll go there. So do you get that gooey, thick, double-stacked pizza? Yes, that is my favorite one. Yeah. <laughs> so we usually get the chicken special stuff pizza, and it has the tomato sauce, and I like it because they flavor it with fresh basil, so I really like that about it. And then like in the sauce, like buried, you can't see it. It's like the chicken and then the vegetables and it's, it's, it's really good. Absolutely, what did you have to eat? So we actually ordered three pizzas because we <laughs> we didn't assume <laughs> that they'd be, um, <laughs> they'd be that, that big. They'd be that big. Yeah. So we got two deep dish and we got one thin crust. Which they call stuffed. Stuffed. Right, yeah. they call them stuffed. Right. So we had one, it's called the Italian style thin crust, I believe. Um, and when I first took a bite into the thin crust pizza, I felt that the tomatoes were a little, a little bit overwhelming, but the crust could have been soggy, but it wasn't, it was nice and... Um, oh, you liked the thin crust. Yeah, so that was good. Do you get the thin crust? Did you get I got one? one, and it okay. was the Pizza Blanca, I think it was called, and it had sort of like thick, gooey um, mm. cheese. Mm -hmm. And I really loved everything except for the crust. I found that it was a little bit like a saltine cracker. Too thin and for you. No, no, no. It was just um, super heavily salted mm. and too dry. Okay. Um, but I thought that everything else about it was perfect. Tell me about the stuffed pizza, and then we'll get back to your stuffed pizzas. I got the mushroom and spinach. spinach, and I thought that the chunky tomatoes on top were perfectly paired with this sort of extremely thick layer of cheese that like you'd pull out right. and just miles of cheese. <laughs> um, and underneath it all, there was this little layer of like veggies that were well spiced. So it added an extra punch to the pizza and the th it was a thinner crust. So it wasn't as thick and heavy as the rest of the pizza, mm -hmm. which was perfect. Cause, Cause there's a couple crunchy. crusts in there, right? Yeah, yeah. So mm -hmm. I think it was all perfectly balanced. Okay. For the um, spinach and mushroom, I felt that it was hard to differentiate the difference between the spinach and the mushroom. I, it kind of just tasted like one, but overall it was very delicious. But you enjoyed eating it. Right. And you can get meatballs there too. Yes, I, um, I had the meatballs and it was served in a cast iron skillet and I liked it because it kept it hot. Mm -hmm. And so the meatballs, I cut into it and I can see all the flavors and the spices and the fresh pieces of basil again. And then their tomato sauce, again, flavored with more basil, mm -hmm. which I really love about it. 
and then they put um, Parmesan cheese on top that was kind of melted by the time it got to our table. Okay. I had the Caesar salad as well. And it's fresh romaine lettuce, and then they have fresh Parmesan cheese, and they grate it for you. Yeah. And then their Caesar dressing. This one is a little different mm -hmm. than your regular store-bought Caesar dressing because it has more of like a tangy, almost kind of spicy flavor. And then they crack fresh pepper all over your salad, and it also gives that good spicy flavor. And then it comes with the crunchy little breadsticks and on the side, and I like munching on those. Did I did not try a salad. Mm -hmm. We actually, we had seven people with us. Oh, that, and, they ate all the pizza. Uh, yeah. We still had leftovers, though, so it's, it was really nice how, like, you could order one pizza and still have leftovers mm -hmm. for tomorrow, for lunch, or whatever for your kids. I also love the fact that we ordered a day before, and when we arrived, our pizzas were hot and ready for us when we sat down, because it's perfectly timed. Especially since with deep-ditched pizza, it's a process. Right, and it can take a long time. Exactly. Well, it's interesting. Zachary's is, is a very unique business model. It's owned by the employees, which is a very neat way that people can work there a long time yeah. and, and really be invested in the company just by working hard. And so. I think you can tell that they really enjoy being there from the fact that, like, there were smiling faces and literally they wrote on our box in, like, Sharpie, mm -hmm. thank you for coming, we enjoyed your table or whatever, and they gave us lollipops too. So yeah. it was a very considerate sort of, they wanted you to be there. It wasn't just like, you're another table that we have to serve. It was like, we're letting you into our home. Yes, people were super nice. I mean, obviously the deep dish pizza took a little longer, but the thin crust pizza came fast. The people were really nice. And, yeah. and you could take a lot home, huh? Yeah, definitely wouldn't order three pizzas, even if you have seven people. It's yeah. huge. Yeah. Right. It's right. definitely worth your money. Like you right. get a lot for not, ver it's not very expensive. Right, well this is your restaurant, so wrap it up for us. Zachary's has bomb pizza and cool artwork. <laughs> All right, Aditya. Um, Zachary's has deep dish pizzas and gives you a hint of Chicago. Okay. Uh -huh. Zachary's Pizza is a great place to go with family, it's a community and it has great pizza. All right, if you would like to try Zachary's Pizza, it's on Crescent Drive in Pleasant Hill. It's open every day for lunch and dinner and the average dinner tab per person is around $20. Aditya's got a thing for burritos. We're talking build your own stuff to the brim mega burritos oozing with all the fresh guac, sour cream, and salsa you can handle. Luckily, he can find them just biking distance from his Palo Alto home at Sancho's Taqueria. So I come from a family of restaurant people where everybody from aunts and uncles, my parents, all had restaurants. My name is Adam Torres and I'm from Sancho's Taqueria. So my first job out of culinary school was at Boulevard in San Francisco and it taught me the standard of nothing too fancy, just great ingredients, fresh produce, and really defined clean food. So our location here in Midtown is super popular because it's super kid friendly. There's the School of Rock just down the street, which comes here and does performances on Fridays after school. The kids can be loud. If one gets a little rowdy, it's okay. If the rice spills, no big deal. So the burritos, they're very good because it's like, it's like, it's got a mash of everything, you know? Like, they're big. I would say our biggest selling item, most popular item, would be the fish taco. You could have it grilled, you could have it fried. Of course, the secret sauce with a house-made remoulade. And you know it's good because like UPS people are getting it. Look at this beautiful taco. There's a kung fu place next door, and everyone can come here, meet here for lunch, and have a great meal. Aditya, why do you like this restaurant so much? So it's very authentic um, with its authentic Mexican decorations and its authentic Mexican music and the people there are super friendly and they also speak Spanish. Also, the food is very flavorful. What do you typically order? So if I'm really hungry, I would really go mm -hmm. for the burritos because there's a variety of choices. You can get your choice of meat, 
your choice of salsa. Right. And they make it so fast if you watch right. them. They're like bam, 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 bam. <laughs> and it's just big and hearty and perfect if you're super hungry. But when I'm not so hungry and I didn't come back from like a big swim meet, then I would personally prefer the flautas. Mm -hmm. They're like three crunchy tortillas yeah. on a bed of lettuce with a side of rice and your choice of beans with your choice of meat inside. I normally like the carne asada. Mm -hmm. And on top, there's queso blanco, mm -hmm. um, a type of cheese that they put on top. Wow, you're making me hungry. <laughs> what did you have when you went, Celeste? So I had the pollo and mole. Mm -hmm. And what it is, it's chicken breast, and it has this mole sauce. It's like a chocolate sauce, but when you think of chocolate, you think it's gonna be sweet. But this sauce, it's more of a savory, like, mm -hmm. spicy sauce. So you taste a little bit of that chocolate. Like, it definitely tastes like chocolate, but it's not sweet, you know? Right. So that's usually one of my favorites because my mom cooks it a lot at home. And, and how did this compare to your mom's? I mean, that's a big order. I mean, yeah. <laughs> <I know>. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay, and what about you, Hannah? Um, so I was with my family when I went, and it was lunchtime, and I got the... Um, El Pastor tacos and the um, mm -hmm. fried fish tacos to share with my mm -hmm. family. And my little sister and my cousin both got just simple classic burrito with nothing added, no meat, because right. they're both vegetarian. Uh, and that was really good. I tried some of that just fresh, clean, sharp. It was just a classic. Everyone loves cheese, beans, and rice in a burrito. Right. And I found that the tacos were rich and creamy and the fish was fried, but it wasn't too crispy, which was good. Yeah. Yeah. What about the ala diabla? Oh, okay, well, my dad got that. Um, I didn't really get a bite because he ate everything so fast, <laughs> but it looked like the shrimp was covered in some type of red spicy sauce mm -hmm. with a side of rice and beans as well. So it just looked like creamy and Did your dad's delicious. eyes get big like it was really spicy? Yeah, so um, he's not Indian, my, he's, um, he's Northern European, mm -hmm. but he still loves spicy food, but it, I think it was a little <laughs> spicy for him. <laughs> I mean, it is the devil, right? right. Come on, you gotta yeah. have a little heat. <laughs> and um, to drink, I got the horchata, mm -hmm. which is a, it's like a sweet flavored milk. Kind of like, like a rice milk. Right, yeah. I, I find it like mesmerizing mm -hmm. just to watch it. <laughs> Go around, around, around the machine. machine. Right. And did you get the horchata? Is yes, that? I also got the horchata. And other ones are a lot more sweet, mm -hmm. but this one, it had more of a rice flavor mm -hmm. and more cinnamony. Right. And I really liked right. it. It was very refreshing. So did you feel it, it was really casual? And I really enjoyed the authentic Mexican art on the walls. Oh, and yeah. there was like this one piece that I remember seeing when I went to Mexico with mm -hmm. my mom and it was like an older woman and older man and then mm -hmm. in their face it yeah. was bodies like you know and it made up their facial features and that was really cool right. and then it was like brightly decorated everywhere yes it was a cool place that we just went for lunch and then we walked around a lot in that area since mm -hmm. I'm not very familiar with it and did you find like you got value for what you ordered yes everything was actually very well priced and mm -hmm. it was good food it was great for takeout too because mm -hmm. um, I could totally see on the weekend like my family grabbing it if we don't have time to make food. Now, if you all, since you're into food so much, if you had to open a restaurant, can you think of what it would be? Okay, <gasps> Hannah's like, so, I know, I know, I know. So, it. I would own a bakery called Upper Crust, and it would be a place where we sell all your favorite things, like only the upper, like the top of a muffin, because mm -hmm. personally, I like the tops of muffins right. or cupcakes. Right. I don't really like the other parts. <laughs> or cereal milk. When you have mm -hmm. a bowl of cereal, you usually drink the cereal milk after. Like right. an upper crust pizza. You know what yes. I mean? You just have the exactly. <laughs> just the top like of trying it. to figure like it out. Thin nice. little layer. Yeah. All sauce. right. What would your restaurant be? Um, I'd probably open a classical South Indian restaurant because my mom would really be like the. Exec executive chef right. and would help me. Have you told um, her this yet, that she's going to be in the kitchen? No. Okay. <laughs> All right. What about you? I will, uh, there's two things. I would either do a soul food restaurant or a mm -hmm. Mexican restaurant um, because my dad's African-American and my grandma, um, she makes a lot of the classic collard greens and the oh. crispy mm. and the crispy mac and cheese where it's like oh the crispy God, like, right. so like, hungry. Like I always eat the corners. It's like save the corner yes, for me. Exactly. Let me get the corner. Okay, you it's could like open lasagna. something together. Corners and upper crust. Yes. Yeah. Oh, I see it. High five. All right. We're I'll going into business I'll together. I'll be on the corner. Cut yes, of the exactly. Profits. It will be a little cut of the profits on this one. <laughs> yeah, me. You were here. You were here. <laughs> All right. Well, this is your restaurant. Give us a quick summary. 
Um, if you're looking for something easy to take on the go or to have a sit down dining experience, then Central Snack City is the place for you. All right, and Celeste. If you're craving authentic Mexican food, go down to Sancho's. And Hana. I think it's a great place and they have great horchata. All right, if you would like to try Santos Tacaria, it's on Middlefield Road in Palo Alto. It's open every day for breakfast, lunch, and dinner, and the average tab per person is around $15. So I have to thank my guests on this week's show. Hana, who introduced us to spit-fired souvlaki and garlicky fries with Granch at Suvla in San Francisco. Celeste, who dives into Chicago-style deep dish at Zachary's Pizza in Pleasant Hill. And Aditya, who tackles the enormous burritos and crispy flautas at Santos Taqueria in Palo Alto. So join us next time when three new guests will recommend their favorite spots right here on Check Please Bay Area. I'm Leslie Sabraco, and I'll see you then. You guys were awesome. Check Please Bay Area is made possible by the members of KQBD and by the Bay Area Airport that's close and reliable. iFlyOAK.com It's the room that's less sort of private and more private. It's a thousand things, big and small. Sutter Health. You guys were awesome. Sing us out. Do a little song. A little song. Uh... Breakfast at Tiffany's and bottles of bubbles. Girls with tattoos who like getting in trouble. Lashes and diamonds, ATM machines. Buy myself all of my favorite things. Been through some bad times, I should be a <laughs> All right, we're good. Awesome. <laughs> Excellent. All right, we're good.